Andrew, it's been uh, well nearly a year since we last sat down together. Very a different time. It was in my London studio, and eight days after that, you got arrested. What's the year been like for you? It's certainly been an interesting one. I've been constrained this entire year. I spent 93 days in a Romanian dungeon, five months locked in my house, and now I'm restrained within the country of Romania. So it's certainly been a turbulent time. The moment you got arrested, it was all pretty dramatic. The video came out, the world saw it. A lot of people smashing into your, your home. Did you have any inkling, warning that something like this may happen? I knew it. I kept saying before I was arrested on every single podcast I did, I said, you get three lives in the world. The first life, they're going to cancel you. They're going to slander you. They're going to delete your access to social media so you can't defend yourself. The second life, they're going to try and put you in jail for no reason. And if you continue to speak against the power, they're going to assassinate you. I knew I was on my second life. I kept saying it. I knew it was coming. I didn't know the bullshit reason they'd use, but I found out once I was in a cell. When you were arrested, you, you didn't actually, you don't speak any Romanian at Zero. All. And they didn't speak English to you. Correct. So you were taken to a cell. You had no idea what they were alleging you'd done. I was arrested on the 27th of December. So because of Christmas and New Year's and other problems, they couldn't even translate my paperwork for two weeks. So for the first two weeks I was in a prison cell, I had no idea why. I was given papers in Romanian. I could read human trafficking, I understood. But I was like, human trafficking who, when, what? None of this makes sense. I waited two entire weeks inside of my cell before I was given an English translation and then I realized exactly how ridiculous the whole case was. Just to clarify, I am accused of helping my friends get big on TikTok. That is what I'm accused of. I told some girls I know how to post on TikTok to become viral when I was at the time the most viral person on the planet. And they are saying I'm a human trafficker for that reason. It is insane. Well, we'll come to what you've been accused of. It's more serious than the way you've categorized it, but we'll come to that. There is a lot of speculation that the reason the Romanian authorities knew that you were back, because you were en route, I believe, to Dubai for a New Year's Eve party, is that you were interacting with Greta Thunberg on social media and you had a pizza in front of you which came from a well-known Romanian pizza uh, store. Is there any truth to that? I don't think so. I think that they know where I was. A lot of people knew where I was. And uh, they had instructions from higher up to teach me a lesson. I was on my second life, and that's exactly what I'm going through right now. There's an irony to your situation because you always said the reason you came to Romania was precisely because you thought you could avoid being in this situation. Well, I loved Romania, and it's a strong Christian nation with strong traditional values. I want a life where I'm left alone by government. I don't believe in big government. I'm trying to avoid that. It felt like Romania was a place which was very safe societally and the government was not too interested or involved in people's lives, but things change. Also, your freedom and your ability to speak the truth is heavily correlated to your insignificance. When you become large and people start listening to what you say, you soon realize you no longer have freedom of speech and it doesn't matter where you are on the planet. If they decide you must be assassinated, you will be assassinated. You in jail, what was that like? Romanian jail is not English jail. I mean, describe it. What was the cell like? I have to be careful what I say because I don't want to insult the Romanian justice system, which I'm still beholden to. However, it's exactly as bad as people would expect it to be. Luckily, it was in the winter, so the cockroaches were not too bad. It was also during Ramadan, so I didn't have to eat so much, which was helpful because of the situation. I think the most stressful thing about it is I had no idea how long I was going to be in there for. I was dragged from my house. I was given papers in Romanian. I didn't know why I was there. I found out why I was there and it was garbage. I couldn't seem to get out. I could have been held for years. It's very stressful. And uh, the best thing you can do is turn to God and and train as hard as possible. I did thousands of push-ups a day every single day. Were you in solitary this in this period, three months? I, no, I wasn't in solitary the entire month, the entire time. Sometimes I was by myself. Sometimes I was with other guys, and sometimes I was with my brother. So, when you were on your own, were they keeping you in there for twenty-four hours a day? Were you allowed out? No, I wasn't allowed out. There was no yard time. It was twenty-four hours a day, locked in a single room, probably three or four steps large, and you do nothing but stare at the wall. And you. How many it. days did you do that for? On your own. Eleven, twelve. I mean, that's a pretty grim scenario for for anyone life scream for you always being mr confident you said interestingly that you wouldn't categorize what you were feeling as depression because you don't believe in the concept of depression you and i have argued about that before but it sounds to me from what i've seen you say when you've talked about this 
that that was pretty close to depression, what you were feeling. Life's grim. And if you want to be a superhero, you have to understand in every single superhero movie, he is losing for 80% of the movie. He's going to suffer for the majority of the movie before he wins at the end. I've always wanted an exceptional life, Pierce, and I'm not a coward. And I knew that by telling the truth about certain issues, I was going to pay the price for it. So I won't say that I deserve to be in jail, but I certainly put myself in there by telling the truth to the populace and telling the truth in living. But when you're on your own in that cell, what were you thinking? It's a long time to self-reflect, right? It certainly is. And I think my number one concern when I was in jail, despite the fact that my situation was dire, were my concerns as a man and all the people I have to take care of and my children and my family and the people I pay for and all the people who work for me. And truthfully, I wasn't worried about myself. I was worried about everybody else. And I think that's the true masculine frame. Did you get emotional? Did you shed tears in yourself? I'm an emotional man. I think, I think men are hyper emotional. We just have to control it. I was extremely busy inside of my jail cell. I had lots of push-ups to do. I was very concerned about the people on the outside. I was trying my best to get out. It's difficult for me to answer the question because it was a interesting frame of mind. I knew that God was watching and I had to perform. It's very difficult for me to go through life saying I'm the top G, I'm this, I'm that, and speak about mental resilience and mental toughness. And then the second I'm thrown inside of a solitary confinement cell, cower out. I'm not that person. There's some, it, other, I, there's some other people who talk about mental toughness and want to mm. give advice, and when bad things happen to them, they end up addicted to prescription drugs. I'm not a coward and I'm not a liar. No, but, but it would be perfectly natural to be emotional in that scenario, and there's no shame in admitting that. I was emotional. I missed people. Mm. I missed them, and I knew they missed me. So I felt a long, I felt a strong sense of missing. But you cried. There were tears that ran down my face, but I did not cry. I mean, that's crying. I would disagree. Because you, you're worried about admitting that. You think it sounds Absolutely weak. not. That's a perfectly fine scenario to cry in. But I think the act of crying is an act of desperation. To sit and to cry is an act in and of itself. To do push-ups thinking of your children with tears running down your face, but you're concerned with finishing as many push-ups as possible within that day, I do not consider that crying. I consider that tears running down my face. When you found out what they were alleging you'd done, sexual assault, exploitation, and so on. What did you feel about that? What was I, your first reaction? My first reaction was, ah, the standard playbook. The standard playbook for anybody who speaks up against power is sexual exploitation. Isn't that the normal one they go to? Can't we name like 10 or 15 people right now they hit them with this exact same garbage? Name a full-grown man who's 36 or 37 years old who's not had sexual relations with a woman at some point in the past. And the way the Matrix works is they lie by omission, right? They just hit Russell Brand with it. I think they hit P. Diddy with it this morning. Julian Assange just got hit with it. He's still in his cell. But lots of people get hit with these allegations and it turns out to be true. A lot of people get hit with them and they turn out to be false. So. Yeah, but you're sort of trying to make out all the people you just named are innocent. You don't know that. Of course I don't know that. But a lot of people get hit and it turns why out would to be you false. Why would you assume they're innocent? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the way the Matrix operates is it chooses something which is heinous. If they accused me of drug dealing, nobody would care. They choose something which is heinous, so the process itself is a punishment. So they damage your reputation throughout the process, regardless of whether it's successful or not. Then what they do is they lie by omission. They throw you in a cell and they contact everyone you've ever interacted with. 2,000 people I know were called, and they were looking for one person to say they're a victim. By the way, they failed. They did not even find one. But if they did, they would then say, Andrew Tate's victim, he's a sexual assaulter. And they would remove the testimony of the 1,999 people who said, I'm a very nice man. Lie by omission. And then they put together this entire package, use the mainstream media to convince the world that you deserve to be in jail. And that is how the matrix operates. I mean, to be clear, I don't know if you're guilty or not. I do. You're perfectly entitled to say that. And you know, right? Of course I know. But I don't know. And I will await any trial that comes uh, to see what comes out in the trial and see what happens, right? So I'm not going to prejudge the trial. I'm not going to judge you and say, I think you're guilty. I don't know, yeah. right? We are where we are. You've been charged with serious crimes and it's likely you'll face a trial and we'll see how that all plays out, obviously. Going back to jail, how were you treated by other people? Everybody in jail was extremely apologetic to me. All of the staff, the police officers, everyone who worked in the jail, the person who served me my meal, everybody was very sorry for what happened to me. They made it very clear they knew it was garbage and they were apologetic. That was the only vibe I could give you. They were kind of like, listen, you got too big. I'm sorry. This is how things work. And sorry, here's your meal. Nobody had any real problem with me. None of the prisoners had a problem with me. Did you and get I into any fights? 
there was a, a, a couple scenarios where violence could have occurred, but I think once people realize that violence is a certainty and that you do not operate under a fearful realm, they often aren't so interested. So people threatened you? I wouldn't say they threatened me, but they would have liked to have got the opportunity to threaten me. And what happened? And they realized that would have been a bad decision. And all in all... Well, what, did you, what did you say to them? Because you don't speak Romanian, so... I didn't, you're right. I actually used a quote from Street Fighter. I said, uh, I quoted Dowson, and I said, they do not understand the secrets of yoga fire, because I knew they had no idea what I was talking about. It was near the washing machines, and they looked at me like I was completely crazy, and they walked away. There's more than one person. Correct. And they made, they made it clear what? That they wanted to... I have to be careful what I say, because I'm still beholden to the Romanian judicial system. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's just an incident in jail. That's Correct. That's to do with the system. Incident, an incident report was written, and it's better I don't mention it. But there was a direct threat to... I've had threats, yeah, and I have threats every single day of my life, and I think jail is a hyper-pressurized version of reality, and you need to have an extremely strong mind so you don't attack yourself, and an extremely strong body so others don't attack you. And I understood that there was a threat of violence at all times, and I just decided to go through life extremely respectfully, but make it clear if that's a decision somebody else wants to make that I'm prepared to partake. One of the things I would think about, other than my family, immediate family, but one particular member of my family, if I found myself in jail, would be my mother and what she would be feeling and what she'd be thinking. She's been incredibly supportive to me. I know yours has to you. Did you think about your mother? I was extremely concerned for her. I was concerned because the media establishment were hounding her. She was obviously very worried, but she knew she wrote, raised strong sons. But we're her number one protectors, and I was concerned for her. I, I wasn't concerned for myself in jail. I didn't even suffer in jail as, mo as much as I did when I got out. I didn't have nightmares in jail. I had nightmares once I left jail. I was in the middle of a battle. I don't think you get PTSD while you're fighting. You get it afterwards. I was in the middle of a battle trying to make sure that everybody I love and care about is taken care of and trying to make sure that bills are paid. Please understand, the day I was arrested, which is a year ago, every single bank account that I have was frozen. All of my assets were taken. I haven't had a, a dollar of money since January. You had 10 cars January. taken, I think. 15. 15 cars and, some, and how many properties? 15 cars, six properties, 20 diamond watches, gold bars, cash, land, Every single bank account, millions and millions and what millions of dollars. What was the total value of everything they seized? 16, 17 million pounds? Yeah. And they took all of it. And I still don't have access to any of these things. I mean, as we're doing this interview, you're expecting to hear sometime today as to whether you may get those possessions back. Is it, is it all or nothing? Do you get it all back or nothing? Correct. As we sit here, the judge is deciding whether I get all of my items returned or I get none of them returned. And truthfully, under the law... I should have never had them taken in the first place. So we're gonna see what the judge decides. And I have to put my faith within the Romanian judicial system. I have no other choice. I'm not a coward, I'm not gonna run. But let's not talk about the Romanian judicial system. Let's talk about the judicial systems of the world. I've recently seen some very scary decisions in America, in England, in these Western democratic nations. You see people doing 20 years for attending peaceful protests. So you start to sit and wonder when you're in these situations, what is a trial? What is a judge? What is this? These are just people in which a room. Peace, which peaceful process are you talking about? There's been a few. And well, I who, think who's got 20 years for attending a peaceful protest? I, I don't want to say names. I saw it somewhere on Twitter. Somebody attended, I think it was uh, a protest, a pro-Trump protest, and they ended up getting 20 years. What if you're talking about the January 6th riots? They were riots where people died. Well, it's interesting. They're not, they're not peaceful protests. Well, it's interesting because the world is actually very nuanced. And what I tried... Well, that to wasn't nuanced. Well, that was a, a huge mob of what people I tried to do attacking is, the US campaign. Well, what I tried to do is I try to look at a, a broad spectrum of, of events and I try to put things into a nuanced view and I don't try and take an instant black or white point of view on things. Mm. And the fact that BLM were rioting and destroying the entire nation for months and during that exact week and then some other people got together with an opposing political view and are facing serious prison time for doing less damage than BLM did. I find that kind of scary because... Well, under, people a, did die. Well, in a democratic nation, we should all be the same under the law. Yeah, but Andrew, just to be clear, on January the 6th, people died. People died during BLM. I mean, there are certainly inconsistencies in the way groups of people have been policed. I think well, that's, the same, that's the same whether you're talking about the BLM marches to the uh, pro-Palestinian marches and so on, right? There's a lot of inconsistency. Well, then we agree. In, in, well, there's a lot of inconsistency in global policing, I think. I think that's a perfectly valid thing to say. But the idea that someone's got 20 years for being in a peaceful march is not true. The, the ones who've got the lengthy prison sentences have been held account well, for I'm not even, serious crimes. I'm not even condoning January 6th. 
I don't even know the ins and outs of January 6th. I mm -hmm. wasn't there. I'm mm -hmm. not saying it should have happened. What I'm saying is exactly what you have said. There seems to be some massive inconsistencies in global policing now. So when you end up in a position where you're speaking against the system, as I do, and you understand that there are massive inconsistencies in policing globally, you start to sit down and seriously wonder if you stand a fair chance of a fair trial in any country on earth. I actually have to give massive credit to the Romanian judicial system because a judge one day sat down and said, why are these boys in jail and let us go? I don't know if I would have had a fair shot like that in many other nations. When you were released from jail after about three months, what was that feeling like? I, my, my brother and I were in the same cell at that time. We were extremely happy. I remember using the last of my mouthwash. During the day, I had some rituals to keep me sane, and I'd enjoy one swig of mouthwash a day. It's amazing how bored you get when you're staring at cockroaches, and even that sensation. So there were literally cockroaches in your cell? Correct. How many at any given time? At night, there was a lot of them. Like, what, dozens? Or? Yeah, a, a few. There was an infestation. We did our best to kill as many as we could. It kept us entertained, but uh, they're annoying to sleep with. But mouthwash was something I enjoyed every day. The sensation of mouthwash made me happy, and I remember using all of my mouthwash. And then instantly my brain started turning to all of the things I need to do. I'm a man. I have responsibilities. For 93 days, I wasn't working. I started concerning myself with, okay, I'm about to get out of jail. Thank God. I'm going to leave. Who do I need to take care of? What's paid? Do I have any money left? Are bills due? Is mom okay? Are my children okay? And I just started thinking about work. And as soon as I got out, I didn't sleep for three days. I How many children do you have? I'm less confidential. Why? Because the, I have enemies, and unfortunately, I do not want to give them any information. But you have more than one. I have more than one, correct. Right. So, obviously, you're caring for your children. I understand that as a father, right? And obviously, and you have a partner? Yes. Are you married? No. I think I asked you last time and you were a bit cryptic about it. You're not married yet. No. You have a partner who's the mother of your children. Correct. The same woman is the mother of all your kids? It's confidential. It's a bit stupid to say confidential. It, it is confidential, Pierce. It's confidential. I don't think you marry and have kids with it is confidential, surely. It is for me. Really? Of course. I am a basically number one enemy of the state, Piers. Look mm -hmm. what they've done to me. What have they put me in jail for? At the beginning of this garbage, people were sitting there thinking, maybe he's a human trafficker. It's been a year. Who? <laughs> show me a picture. Show me a video. Who's even in a victim? There's nobody. The whole thing is made up. Well, we're going to come. Well, we're going to come to what they say you've done, right? We're going to come to that. But I'm just curious. You come out of prison. You've got no ability to access any of your assets. How have you been functioning financially since then? I believe in prayer and I trust in God. Well, prayer I, doesn't pay the bills. And I do my very best. But prayer doesn't pay the bills. Unfortunately, absolutely everything I own was seized by the Romanian state. So I'm just going to have to survive and do my very best. Yeah, but how? I'm doing my very best, Pierce. Have you got wealthy benefactors helping you? I'm doing my very best. I wish I had wealthy benefactors. I wish I had people on my side. Yeah, you can't function on, on no income at all. Seems you can. How? I'm doing my very best, Pierce. What does that mean? It means I'm doing my very best. Absolutely everything I own is, own, is taken by the Romanian state. I don't have anything they don't have. How do you pay for food? I just have to do my best. What does that, what does that mean? It means that I believe in God and I pray for well, God's Every not going to pay your bills. God has been paying my bills so far, it seems. Mm. It's amazing how far faith can take you. It's often when you have absolutely nothing left, people turn to faith. But you should turn to faith first. And you should believe in God when things are good. And that he will be there when times are bad. Initially, you were put on this sort of rolling 30-day house arrest. And they kept renewing that month by month by month. And then in June, uh, you and your brother and two others were formally charged with rape, trafficking, and forming an organized crime group to sexually exploit women and there were seven alleged victims named in the indictment you said at the time i look forward to being found innocent um you said earlier who are these women well there are seven named in the indictment yeah have you seen the videos of them on the internet saying we're not victims they made us be victims we told them well we that will victims. all presumably be, be analyzed in a trial do you know when the trial may be i have no idea it's so good do, you, be a do long you believe time. it will happen i'm not sure it could get to a point where a judge any time before the trial decides his case is garbage and throws it away. If you ask me what I believe happened, it's very simple. They threw me in a jail cell knowing they had no case, knowing they had no victims, but they thought if they plaster me all over the MSM and they say that I'm a bad person and they call enough people, they will find the case they want. They couldn't find it. You name the date they charged me. They had six months to charge me. Usually the Romanian state, even the American embassy confirms to me charges within 30 days. With me, they used all six months trying to build a case and find actual victims of an actual crime. They couldn't. They charged me on the very last possible day they could unless they'd have to drop the entire case. And they charged me with garbage because they have nothing. There are no victims. I've done nothing wrong. And they've tried very hard. And let me say something very pertinent to the, to the audience here. 
It's very difficult when you're thrown inside of a jail cell. You do not have access to social media. You do not have access to money. The entire MSM establishment are calling you a bad person. Hotlines are set up saying, if Andrew Tate's ever heard to hurt you, call this hotline. You're a rich person where people may want to get money from you and exploit you and extract resource from you. And they're sitting here calling anyone you've ever known. They called my gardener's daughter, who I've never even spoken to, asking if I've ever done anything wrong to her or said anything wrong to her, trying to find victims of a crime that don't exist. It's actually a miracle from God that no one's come out trying to extract money from me. Whole thing is garbage. They could do this to anybody. Peers, they could do this to you. They could put you in a cell, put all over the media you're a sexual exploiter, and for three months talk about how bad you are when you can't defend yourself and call everyone you've ever interacted with. And if anybody you were ever rude to once decides they want a payday or some fame, they can use it against you. It's insane. The, the Romanian authorities' prosecution files uh, accuse you of using verbal and physical abuse to keep women in line taking 50%, uh, I believe, of the women's online income, although I believe that figure could vary, could be up to 80%. Is that right? No, they accuse me of exploiting women who, may, who did TikTok, the same women who say we were not exploited, he just told us how to do TikTok. Also, in the in prosecution file, if you want to talk about it, there's not a single bank transfer. There's not a single piece of evidence for any money. So I'm accused of making money from TikTok, but they haven't found any money. There's no money, and the victims are saying, I didn't exploit them to do TikTok. What you, the whole thing is a joke. What is, I think, problematic for you is the war room, which was a, a group of- Miscategorized and misunderstood. It was called the war room. Correct. Okay, and it had a lot of people who were dubbed the generals who ran the war room Correct. for you. And the war room had five to six hundred members who paid, I think, six thousand plus dollars to be a member of this. And when you saw the the logs of the web chats between people from the war room to each other, a lot of it made disturbing reading. Were you disturbed by it when you read that? Firstly, a lot of that is bullshit. A lot of that's fake. Secondly, well, you think that literally those logs are fake? Absolutely. Secondly, but the BBC verified them. The BBC verified them. Are they the same people who verified the vaccine? Those people, they're liars. Firstly, a lot of them are fake. Secondly, the well, were you members... disturbed by anything you read? No, because none of it's real. Firstly, secondly, there's 4,000 members in the war room. Thirdly, the war room is about masculine personal development. We talk about fitness, making money, strength. We talk about very important things. I, there's 4,000 members inside. If you're telling me that amongst 4,000 members with 24 hour chat seven days a week for the last five years, they've managed to find two guys talking locker room talk and that somehow offends the world, then nobody understands how the world works. That's not why I was in jail. It's nothing to do with the war room. I was in jail because I spoke against power, because I told the truth about COVID, because I told the truth about the war in Ukraine, because I told the truth about all of these things. I don't understand why people would want to put you in jail for giving your opinions about COVID or Ukraine. Because why would they? Why wouldn't they? Well, but, why would they? Why, because would they, say, the, why because would they say that Andrew Tate's opinion is so important on Ukraine that we have to put him in jail? Because I, don't, I don't buy that. Okay, because I was the most Googled man on the planet and I had a huge affinity with the most troublesome demographic for the matrix, which is the young masculine youth, the people who you need to die in wars, the people who you need to sigh off into being slaves to build the roads while telling them that they're not allowed a point of view and they're not allowed an opinion on anything. And I was saying things which was going against the narrative. And the matrix, the way it operates is it uses the MSM to purport lies, to inject slave programming into people's brains so that we live lives which are not good for us but are good for them. And I was sitting there unplugging it. Why would they sit there and say, we've put together this massive psyop. We're gonna convince everybody to inject themselves with poison and we're gonna lock everyone in their houses and it's all a lie. And we're gonna let this one well, guy who everyone listens to. Andrew, Andrew, it wasn't all a lie. Yes, it was. It wasn't. There was, a new, there was a new novel coronavirus. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what the facts were, and you can then laugh at them if you wish. Sure. But there was a novel coronavirus, yeah. COVID nineteen. It was killing thousands of people a day. Really? Yes, That's absolutely. Scary. Yeah, and as a, and I know people who died. Who I know doesn't? I know people who died before Corona. Of Fine, I'm sure people died of lots of things, but it was killing exponentially thousands and thousands of people. And then vaccines were developed at very high speed and they managed to save, in my estimation, millions of lives. You may not agree with that, Absolutely. but those are facts as assumed by the body of scientific and medical experts in the, the world. The body of scientific and medical mm. experts, you mean the matrix. I could get- What is the matrix? The matrix are a bunch of people who can come up with studies from the sky to say anything they want them to say, so they can use the MSM to purport garbage inside of people's minds. Mm. So you end up locked in your house, clapping for the NHS like a performing seal, injecting yourself with experimental poison for the ninth mm. time. It's a lie. 
There was no reason to lock everyone in their house. More people died from missed cancer appointments than anyone ever died of COVID. People always got the sniffles before COVID and they've always got it since. It wasn't Let me ask you a question. Hang on, sir. it wasn't. Where has COVID gone? It wasn't. Diseases don't go away. It wasn't. Where's COVID gone? It wasn't. Well, the COVID strains have got milder, as indeed flu did. Flu oh, used to so kill. So it's gone away. Well, flu pandemic in about 100 years ago killed 50 to 100 million people. And it's got steadily milder over the decades since. This is normal medical science uh, pathway for most pandemics, right? So on that, I mean, your sort of cast iron, it was all matrix MSM nonsense is palpably untrue. Well, I'll tell you why that's not untrue. Let me tell you my personal experience with COVID. I'm an extremely logical person. At the beginning, when everyone was dying, dropping dead in the streets in China, which I never saw, by the way, funny. And the Italian hospitals were full. English hospitals were never full, funny. Me and my brother sat there and said, if this disease is so deadly and can damage us as strong military age males, and the world is over, so there's no point in hiding in our house, we decided to go to Sweden. On day one of COVID, day one when everyone still believed, we went to Sweden. Why does no one talk about the fact that Sweden was open the entire time? Why does no one talk about the fact they didn't have masks or lockdown or vaccines? My brother and I partied in nightclubs seven days a week for three entire months while everyone in England was Sweden locked in their house. Had, Sweden actually had a number of restrictions. Uh, not when I was there, not it as was open. Not as draconian as we had in the UK. And there are certainly legitimate questions to ask about the scale of our lockdowns. I think people panicked. They saw what was happening in, in Italy, which had the second best medical healthcare system in the world. And people were dying in massive numbers and the hospitals were overrun. Um, so people may have panicked. Did you hear about the guy who died in a motorcycle crash and it was a COVID death? Did you hear about that one? Well, there was certain Downing people, Street didn't seem very concerned with there COVID. Was a long, they were there was a long debate about people dying of COVID or with COVID. I know all that. But the bottom line for me, it is indisputable that COVID was a deadly pandemic that killed a lot of people. It turned out a lot of older people more than young people, but they didn't know that at the time, not for a long period. The vaccine saved millions of people's lives. There are legitimate questions about some of the boosters, about some of the side effects of the vaccines, as there are, by the way, with all vaccines. But the idea that COVID is some invention by the matrix to suppress and control its people is for the birds, Andrew. It's well, for the birds. It seems the birds and, and I, I don't are friends. Think, I don't think a smart guy like you actually believes that. Of course, I and that's absolutely one of my problems, believe that. One of my problems I have with you is that I think you are intelligent, but I think you also adopt positions that you know are going to get the and you know the anti-matrix mob inflamed and it's just these all-encompassing views you have covid was a load of nonsense vaccines are all dangerous and killing more people than they Never say said that no, i said but, the covid vaccine well covid vaccine well you don't think they worked no of course not because the idea of, of course vaccine, they worked the, the the word vaccine in and of itself is that you get they save millions of lives if you get a vaccine you do not get the disease they changed the definition of vaccine in the dictionary so they could continue to inject us with this pointless poison. Mm. The, I had the vaccine for polio, I've never had polio. You got the vaccine for COVID and you're bragging online how you have COVID for the eighth time, but it's not that bad because you've had six injections. It's insane. And please understand my position. Please understand that I'm a person who doesn't believe any of these studies, don't believe any of this garbage, don't believe the matrix. I'm a person who was in Sweden for three months mm. as everyone was afraid, locked in their houses, partying at will. Sweden and had, it was perfectly fine. Sweden, they had a lower death rate than the UK. They had a much higher death rate than their neighboring countries in Scandinavia. Did you know that? They had a lower death rate Did you know than that? the UK. Did you know that? It doesn't, no, I didn't know that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, matter to you. Of course not. So you wouldn't compare them to their immediate neighbors. You'd only compare them to a country in the UK. If you think lockdowns worked, if you think lockdowns... I think lockdowns were only acceptable as an immediate uh, panic move, which it was, yeah, yeah. before there were vaccines. The yeah. moment they had a successful vaccine program that worked, yeah. then there was no justification for further lockdowns. You're a very important person, and you're very well respected. I'm not important, I'm a journalist. No, you're very important, and you're very well respected yeah. within the UK, and you've been famous for a very long time. Were you invited to the party at Downing Street, or were you not in that sort no. of... No. No? Oh, that's a shame. And I thought the behavior... they seemed very concerned about COVID on the TV. And by and the way, they didn't thought... seem to give a shit since thought... the TV was on. I thought that was disgraceful. And I thought Boris Johnson and the people working at number 10 who were having those parties, uh, when I had friends of mine who were literally saying goodbye to their mothers on FaceTime on their phone because they weren't allowed in to see them, I knew people in care homes where it ripped through and killed a third of the people in the home in two weeks. And the desperation that people felt. I had a cousin who lost his father who couldn't go and see uh, his dying wife and so on. There, there, there it's were, disgusting. There were terrible stories. It's criminal. Terrible stories. It's disgusting. So let me ask you a question as a professional, because we're both adults mm. and we're both very smart. As a professional, which is more likely that 
The government believed COVID was deadly and everybody should be truthfully afraid and locked in their houses, but because they had this spirit inside of them and they couldn't resist the idea of a party, decided to risk their lives to party, or they lied on the television trying to scare everyone and enslave them and lock them in their houses, knowing it's garbage, knowing it's a lie and not caring and had a party behind everyone's backs so they didn't think they'd get caught. Which one is more likely as a professional, as a logical human? Why don't we just agree that they were a bunch of rank hypocrites, stupid people, who were behaving utterly selfishly to the extent that the queen, when her husband, Prince Philip dies, is in the church on her own in a mask with none of her family around her after losing a rock of 70 years. And it turned out the night before, down the street had had, I think, two parties, including a karaoke party. I think that was shameful and disgraceful. Well, I, so I we can went, agree on that, We right? can agree on that, and we can wake up and start to realize, oh, maybe the government doesn't care about us. Maybe the government lies to us. Maybe they tell us things and try and scare us, but they don't actually care themselves. Maybe all they are is hypocritical, self-interested people. Maybe they are. Maybe but then, And maybe they use the MSM to purport their lies, to keep everybody enslaved while they do whatever they want, and that is the matrix in and of itself. And if you speak against it and people listen to you, I'll repeat this. Your ability to speak freely is directly correlated to your insignificance. If you're as big as I was, the most Googled man on the planet telling the truth, you will pay the price, Pierce. And that is why I was locked in that cell. And I do not regret it, because I live true to God. I'm not going to sit here as a coward and not tell the truth to people for as long as I live until they put a bullet in my head. Let me ask you about the lover boy method. So the suggestion is that you and your brother and others, uh, but you, let's talk about you, that you deploy the lover boy method where you would make women fall in love with you. You would then persuade them to do uh, webcam, webcam stuff, right? TikTok. Okay, but wait, let's call it webcam stuff, right? No, They're, let's not call it that. The indictment is about TikTok. Okay, what would you make the women do? Or what would they do with you? I don't make anybody do anything. Okay. In fact, let's talk about the Loverboy method. So it's yeah. very interesting. Let's imagine the Matrix is pissed off with a said individual who's telling too much truth and everybody is listening to him and they decide they're gonna attack him with sexual assault claims. They say, ah, he's making women do, well, we found conversations where he gave advice on how to go viral on TikTok. Mm. He's making women do TikTok, but he isn't being horrible to them. He's not hitting them. He's not being mean to them. So what can we do? Let's use the lover boy method. If I was abusive and mean, they wouldn't say lover boy method. Do you know what lover boy method means? Mm. Being nice. He was nice and polite and kind, and they really liked him as a person, and he told them how to do TikTok. But that's not what the lover boy... He's a lover boy. That's that's not, of course it is. Andrew, that's not what the lover boy method is. Absolutely it is. The lover boy method is where perpetrators woo victims with the prospect of a loving relationship until they can be forced into abusive situations or a form of slavery. This is garbage. That's actually what it means. The lover boy method is being nice to people so that you work together, effectively, what they're mm -hmm. trying to say here. I was nice to girls who asked me for TikTok advice, and they sang us the lover boy method. I didn't beat them into doing TikTok. I didn't force them. I didn't threaten them. In fact, I was like, yeah, you're very pretty. You can be pretty famous. Was there any well. element of coercion? How can there be an element? What does that even mean? Let's be professionals here. What does that even what mean? What do you think coercion means? I was coerced into this interview. You came along to me and said- You weren't coerced into this interview. Yes, I was. Well, don't tell me. The bullying Pierce. MSM said, Andrew, you've got to do an interview. No. You and used... I'm going to fly all no. the way to Romania no. to do it. You do didn't me do that. Favor. You used the lover boy method. You said- so The lover boy method? Yep. Andrew, this is going to be a very interesting interview. We had a good one last time. You're a nice guy. We have some interesting conversations. I didn't say you were a nice guy. I'm going to guy. come along. Wait we're a minute, gonna, wait a minute. We're going to make some money from hey, this interview. Wait a minute. Money will be made for wait all, a minute. both sides. Wait a you minute. You me wait and a you minute. stole the profit. Wait, just to be clear, I've had no conversation with you about this interview. And the conversations I've had with your intermediary were very professional. And I said, I would like to do an interview were with you. Were you nice? I've got, I'm always nice. Lover boy. You can't believe you used niceness to lover boy me because this is a profitable enterprise and I was coerced here. I make no pretense that I'm into, I've am into. i come all the way from London to Romania to Correct. interview you because, yes, I want to do it on my show Correct. and that will clearly benefit me and my show. Am I a full-grown consenting adult who decided the, the, to do the this idea, show? Yeah, but you're not being coerced into doing this. Am I this? a full-grown consenting adult who decided to do this show? Yes. Okay, so I wasn't coerced, correct? But well, what's that got to do with what I've asked you? Because you were nice to me and you're saying that I wasn't That's nice like, to you. I didn't even talk to you. Being nice is the lover boy method and that Andrew, adults have no Andrew, personal I wasn't, responsibility. And I wasn't nice, nice to someone. Uh, they become your slave. I wasn't nice to you and I didn't call you a nice guy. I feel lover boy. Hmm? I feel lover boy. Do you? I'm sorry. Well, I'm yeah. sorry. It's fine. It's, it, you had a, a website, Hustlers University, Correct. offering courses teaching husbands and boyfriends how to get their partners Absolutely into webcams. Absolutely false. 
The Hustlers University, which you can go to now, actually, we've changed the domain, it's university.com, uh -huh. is a school which teaches modern wealth creation methods. We teach people how to make websites, we teach people e-com. Why did you call it, why did you call it a PhD, pimping hose degree? No, you're talking about an old video which was made satirical. Why did you call it that? Oh, that was satire. Of course it was. Nine years ago, the internet was a very different place. And if you're mm. gonna sit here and say, oh, nine years ago, you said stupid things on the internet. It's not a gotcha moment because every single person has. So have you. No, but you'd be very... So have you, because you advocated for the vaccine, you... sir. So uh, yeah, you said absolutely. stupid things on the internet. Yeah. Life, that's how things go, it's satirical. I also said I'm an astronaut. Do you believe I've been to the moon? Because I haven't, believe mm. it or not. Hustlers University teaches children how to make websites and it teaches, and it's Is there only one reason I'm asking you, advice. only reason I'm asking you, you've repeatedly said in interviews since you were arrested, that you have never categorized yourself as a pimp. You don't think you're a pimp, right? Well, what about all the rappers? Did you ask Ice Cube if he's a pimp and a murderer and a drug dealer? I'm not Jay Z sold crack. I'm not, interviewing, talking I'm not interviewing them. I'm asking you whether you have at any stage in the last 15 years been a pimp. Of course I've not been a pimp. I've said I'm a pimp. I've said I'm an astronaut. I've said I'm a cowboy. I've said I'm the strongest mm. man in the world. I've said I'm James Bond. Throw me in jail. Are you just put me in jail? Okay, I so, deserve it. Nine so, years ago, I made a joke on the internet. So here's my question: Are you are you a fantasist? I'm not a fantasist. Or do you have a persona that's just not you? Of course not. I am me. Well, if you are you, why would you repeatedly call yourself a pimp and then now say you've never been a pimp? Are you going to sit here and say that because I've once said, "Oh, I'm curious whether if you, you you're trying to say to me you didn't mean any of the things you said." So I'm asking myself, well, why should I believe anything you say now? In other words, is what you say actually what you mean? Is Andrew Tate real? Or do you have a complete persona that you've fueled for money that has nothing to do with the real you? I don't know, you tell me. I exaggerated on the internet nine years ago for comedic effect. I'd walk into a nightclub and there'd be girls at my table like every other man who walks into a nightclub and I'd say, pimp in. Oh no, put me in jail, 93 days was not enough with the cockroaches, I should go back. This is a matrix attack, Pierce. Every single person, every single man out there has done things worse than I've done. In fact, I will argue, if you put 99.9% .9 of men through the level of scrutiny I've been through by, fe by multiple federal agencies, you will find a lot worse than him saying he was a pimp on the internet nine years ago. You will find actual genuine crime. And I've done nothing. I live true to God. This is all garbage and it's not real. Like I said to you, I, I don't know if you're guilty or not. I do. Okay. And I am not guilty. No, it's a I'm, matrix attack. I want to be clear to you, I'm not preempting your guilt. I've come here with a completely open mind. You've been charged with serious offences, but I am not going to judge you because I'm not a judge and this is not a courtroom, right? But it's interesting to me that one of the biggest charges against you is that you're a misogynist. And you've always said, I'm not a misogynist. And then the last time I interviewed you, you said, well, I may have said some things that you know, may have been misconstrued. But even in the last week, you've tweeted some stuff, which I'm not even sure if you're aware as you tweet this stuff, how it sounds. Read it. OK, let's read. This is quite a long one. Sure. But I think it's important to read it to get a sense of how you view women. Absolutely. Any woman I date does not have a job. Um, OK, so the woman you're with doesn't have a job. No. OK. Do you date other women? Sometimes. And your partner's fine with that? Obviously. Yeah? And you, you're fine with that? Why wouldn't I be? Well, you think it's fine to be dating other women when, you're, when you have a mother I think we're kids? consenting adults and everybody can make their own personal decisions. Okay, fair enough. Why would I be working so hard, you say, to have hundreds of millions for my woman to waste her life in slaved pennies? No, I will give you a life you can never ever afford. Private jets, five-star hotels, new cars, endless spending money and diamonds. You'll be rich because you're praying for me every day and protecting my spirit. I work in the physical world, she works in the spirit realm. Women shouldn't have to work because being a good partner is a full-time job for a woman. She has to look good. All the beauty treatments are time intensive. Not about money, it takes a lot of time. She has to train every day and stay in fantastic shape. Shop to look amazing next to me. I know there are some men who do a hundred times more than this on a daily basis, but women are not as organized as men and achieving anything significant causes them huge amounts of stress. Yeah. They need to have huge sections of their day empty to waste or they will have a mental breakdown. True. And do you want a woman who's stressed and angry after the commute, unshaven and exhausted? Or do you want a Barbie doll who's always smiling and saying thank you because she did her nails and brought you Prada that day? As a man, unless you're a loser, you're already filthy rich, right? You can get endless sex anyway. Girls are easy. So what can a girl give you? Happiness, vibes, always smiling. Take the edge of a stressful life. Can she always be happy if she's been working all day? No. 
Just to wake up at 11, gym till 1, one appointment and some shopping. Dress beautiful by 7 p.m. for you to finish working and tell you how strong you are. No matter how pissed off you are, just to always be laughing and smiling and writing your little notes about how you're perfect. And just to be playful and funny. She can't do that if she has a job. So your job is being my girlfriend and now you're a millionaire. Congratulations. Behave and aim for the promotion to wife. The reason I read all that in detail was I don't think you understand quite how that comes over because I think that is the purest definition of misogyny I've probably ever read. Well, I don't think you understand. One, especially when I'm talking about the fact that women can't handle what men can do, etc. One, it's slightly sarcastic. There's a sarcastic tone. So do you mean any of this? I mean all of it. Any woman I'm with, I will provide for because so I No woman should her. work. They should spend all day beautifying themselves for you, right? And they might get promoted this to is, wife. This is Your job is being my girlfriend. Correct. There are There are hundreds of millions of women around the world who do a good day's work who still manage to be a very good wife or Agreed. partner. Right? Agreed. Completely. But it's my So life. why would you encourage why would you encourage a whole generation of young men? I mean, I've got to be honest, since our last two interviews before you were arrested, I would say every single day I have young men, mm. teenage boys, maybe early 20s coming up to me asking about you. Yep. It's gone on every day yep. since I interviewed you. Yep. I'm very aware of your reach, I'm very aware of your influence. And I've, I've, whenever I've been asked about it, they say, what do you think of him? I said, I don't really know. I find myself agreeing with 60 to 70% of the things you say. And I do, because I think a lot of the stuff you say about empowering young yeah. men to be confident, to work out, to take care of themselves. To have enough to, money to not, allow, not force their woman to work. Right. But, well, that's the bit. That's the bit where when you stray into that kind of language, particularly in the detail where you reveal what you're really thinking, A, the kind of pathetic, soulless life you want for these women. Where does it allow for being a mother, for example? Being absolutely that's How does a mother of your children manage to find time for being a mother how does, in yeah, this how routine does, of love and devotion does, to you? How, how does having a job give her time to be a mother? This gives her all the time in the world to be a mother. One, it's slightly sarcastic, firstly. What, what, Secondly, do, you, what, what do you mean? Well, you, do you mean can you tell don't, by the tone. Do you mean you don't mean it? No, I mean it. Well, what, which, which but bit, it's slightly sarcastic. Well, sarcasm, means, sarcasm means you don't mean it. No, I mean it. But it's slightly well, sarcastic. You either mean it or you don't. It's either sarcastic or it's not. I mean every single word. But this is the conundrum with you, Andrew. Cartastic. Andrew, sarcastic. this is the conundrum with you, right? It's because not a conundrum. If you'd let me explain, it's not a conundrum at all. You tweet, and also you tweet this. Interesting, I tweeted this out. I get thousands of women yeah. begging me, in, inboxing me, saying, finally a man who understands he needs to provide for a woman so she can be her best self. Right. This is exactly the kind of life that will allow no, no, to There are definitely women that will absolutely love to be so why don't you, why, treated like this. Are they this. misogynists? Uh, no, but what I think they are, they're people who just basically, it's the old sugar daddy thing, right? They want to have a rich guy who's going to pamper them and take care of them. They don't have to do a day's work. They just have to make Being themselves look good for you. Being a good partner is a day's you. work. Well, so you say. Yeah. But it also, the language that you use here seriously diminishes women who do work. You make them out to be, well, you're not doing your job as a partner or wife. You should be doing your job, which is just to devote yourself to his pleasure and making well, him well, it's happy. Well, it's actually interesting you say that because I'll put a lot of the fault of this on men. Let's, let's, if you want to gender the argument, let's do that. I think that a lot of the reason why women can't live this life, if they so choose, if you're a woman who decides to work, then go to work. I don't care. But if you're a woman who decides she wants to retire, it's because she can't find a man who could provide for her at this level. Mm. Do you think when a woman marries a billionaire that she wants to go get a job in Starbucks? Because in my experience, when they marry extremely successful men, they don't want a job. I'm sure Ronaldo's wife isn't begging to go work in Ikea. Actually, no. Ronaldo's wife works very hard. She works for herself, which is different. And her family. Of course, yeah. which is different. She's a hardworking woman. Absolutely, actually. because mm -hmm. being a fantastic partner and having a bunch of children is a bunch of hard work. Mm -hmm. And she also finds the energy to have a, a, a businesses on the side. Fantastic. Right. But, you so don't want, saying here, yeah, but you don't want women to have businesses. No, I'm saying if you're with a man of my stature, you don't have to work. Now, if I met a perfect woman and we were together and we were happy. When you say a man of your stature, with respect, right now you have no income, no possessions. Correct. I'm completely and you're facing, flat, you're flat facing serious criminal charges. I mean, I'm not quite sure what stature you think you're currently selling, but it ain't great. Okay, well then, it's a shame all those women inbox me after I put that tweet out saying, I've got no we agree with you. I think you should interview I met a woman yesterday who, when leaders. I said I was coming to interview, was immediately like, oh, can you put a good word in for me? Of course. Sure. You have, a, you have a definite appeal to a certain type of woman. There's no question. I my, think my question, providing my for question a woman is financially I was, is a man's responsibility. If that means I'm a misogynist, then I'm a misogynist. No, my, is, 
I think so you accept, you accept you are a misogynist? No, I think a man should provide for a woman financially, completely and utterly. If she wants to work, if my partner were to say to me right now, I really feel like getting a job, it would make me happy, then I'll say work. But she doesn't have to. Her job is looking after the children, looking after me, and being as happy as possible. If you think I'm a bad person for saying, if you actually read that, read mm. the subtext and context. I read it I'm all saying, out. Okay, good. Then you'll understand what I'm saying. But you know I did. You heard it. Well, absolutely. So what I'm saying is, I am a man. My life is stressful. My life is pain. I go to jail. I suffer. I have to deal with making money. I have constant, endless headache. I do all of that so I can give you everything, but then I get to have you. Your job is to be happy. I want you to smile. I want you to look your best and feel your best all of the time. If I'm a misogynist for saying that I go through so much pain so that we can be financially secure, so I hope the woman I care about does not have to work a job, if that makes me a bad person, then so be it. Because all I'm saying is I want to take care of her in every single realm. I take care of her physical safety. I take care of her financial security. That is my job as a man. And if more men acted like me, you will see that the world would be a happier and better place. The women who say, I really want to work, I want a career, that's their prerogative and their decision. They're allowed to do that. But also, often the reason they do that is because they can't find a man they trust to take care of them. No. I've, had this, I've had this from women in their own Andrew, mouth. If I found a man who was said, financially secure and as smart as you, I wouldn't be doing this fine. garbage job either. Why was I psyoped into working to pay taxes when I should be at home having children oh, with a man Andrew, I adore? Andrew, it's a psyop. Andrew, there are so many women that will listen to that and be laughing and mocking you. Will say, there? Say, don't be so ridiculous. I would have a job that I love. Maybe they're being paid even more than their man, right? The real world isn't the one that you categorize. The real world is varied and nuanced, mm. but I am talking about my life experience. There's a my very experience. Any woman I love fine. does not have to work unless she decides to. Right. You're the boss. You're in charge. Her job is to make you happy. Her job is to make herself look good. Her job is to work out for your benefit. Blah, 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 blah. It is actually just misogyny. Do you think a woman looking and it's good, also, do you think a woman looking good and working out is, has no benefit at all to her? Of course it does. Okay, so it's not for my benefit, then, is it? You don't you see? But when you, you no, but when you talk you about when you talk about young, no, no, I don't. When you talk about young men and you tell them to work out and take care of themselves, I cheer you on, right? I want that. I've got three sons. I want them to feel that. Well, don't get, you want them to become very rich and successful? And of course. Have a woman who relies on them and have of a beautiful course. family. No, but I don't want a woman who's subservient to them. Why is subservience? Why is a literally woman the tone of the tweet I read is subservience? You did another tweet this week. Men love by telling you what to do and not allowing you to make stupid decisions. We save you from the female inclination to make stupid choices. If a man isn't giving you instructions, he doesn't love you. If you won't listen to a man's instructions, you don't love him. There's, the whole language is so ridiculous. Let me change the language then. A well, you tweeted this to 8.2 million people. Correct. So let me say this. A father loves... Let's say instead of a man loves, say a mm. father loves. A father loves disciplinarian. That's how a father will love you. A mother will say, oh, I hope you're happy. Hope you're doing okay. But, but a father will come along and say, no, don't do this. You must do it that way. That's incorrect. It has to be this mm. way. A father will discipline you because a father feels he knows best for you. It's the masculine essence of love. When a man loves, he shows that he cares via degree. Well, there is a massive difference between a relationship between a father and a child and between a man and a woman in a relationship. Well, completely. And I'm not sure you quite get no, that. No, there is a difference. But I would argue, Piers, I would argue in the happiest relationships, it's a traditionally masculine role in which the man plays and provides. The female is traditionally feminine. The man is the head of the house. Not in an abusive way, doesn't beat her up. I'm talking about the man being the head of the household, like I would like to believe you're the head of your household. And he comes along and says what happens and what doesn't happen because he's the man of the house. No, that's not. That is, that's that actually is not how most households operate now. Well, then it sounds like we understand why the entire world's a mess. Because only 10 years ago, that's exactly how the households mm. were operated. There was a man of the house, and now we have no longer any clear defined roles. There's no more longer a man of the house. You want to talk about knife crime, kids doing drugs, mm. the crime rate, all of these problems. You want to talk about all of the societal ills we face. Mm. Perhaps it's because we don't have any men in the house anymore. Perhaps we need to bring the man of the house back. And the man of the house will come along and be a disciplinarian, and he will make the set rules and the creeds of that house. He will say, within this household, we don't take drugs. That stands for the woman I am with, the children who we have birthed. Nobody takes drugs in this household because this is my house and I'm the man of the house. So it sounds to me like we need to bring it back, sir. Yeah, listen, it's all good macho stuff, okay? And I know lots of young boys who listen to this and go, wow, that's how I should be. Then I read the detail of your tweets. And again, come back to this. We save women 
from their female inclination to make stupid choices. Females are emotional. If a man isn't giving you instructions. Now, females are hang emotional. Hang on, hang on. Peers, he doesn't females love you. Are, females All this are stuff, emotional. All this stuff is designed to, exactly as you've just articulated, is designed to make young men feel that the only way they can be successful in life is to effectively have their women under control, give them instructions that, they have, them that they have to obey. Oh, don't you but here, but here, don't me, buy women Prada and you'll end up in jail. Oh, you can buy them Prada, but let me, let me finish my point. My point is that it seems to me from reading your tweets, even now, that you have a blind spot when it comes to how they sound. I th and it may no, be, and it may be that the legal problems that you're in, which might be extremely serious, and we'll see when the trial happens, but it may be that in your head, nothing you've done is remotely inappropriate because actually in your tweets, you can see there's an element there of wanting coercion and control. You want to control women. You want them to be effectively your servants, slaves, for want of a better slaves, phrase. Slaves who get Prada and get to work out in the gym and get to look good. Yeah, but you understand, while I, while do you under I do but you understand the point I'm making? No, I don't. Because Which is in your head, the line is blurred so much now with this macho rhetoric that you've actually lost track of how this sounds. Here's all of the things I Even when I read that stuff to you, I could see you looking at me and you say, your answer is, I was being sarcastic. No. And I said, well, where? And then you go, well, no, I meant it. Well, it can't be both. I meant it and I said you either it's mean sarcastic it. tone. You either mean it effect. or it's, well, no, because sarcasm means you don't mean it. Pierce, all the things we you've just described. Do you, do you accept that? No, I, You're a I smart meant, guy. You know what sarcasm means, absolutely. right? Absolutely. I said it has a sarcastic tone for comedic effect. Mm. All the things I'm saying, and the things I've said are basically the way the entire world thought only 10 years ago. You may buy into the PSYOP, you may buy into the new thing. I don't buy into any PSYOPs. Uh, we just talked about the vaccine, sir. Yeah, the vaccines I, weren't PSYOPs. Uh, of course not. No. So I believe that there should be a man of the house. You had a polio vaccine, right? Correct. Why? Because I didn't get polio. I wouldn't have a COVID vaccine because I'd still get COVID. Plus probably myocarditis and have a heart attack. Mm. So we do, believe do there think, was a man do, of the house 10 years think, ago. Do you think statistically more people got myocarditis by having the vaccine or not having it? I think statistically we need to bring you don't, it back. You don't know, do you? Why would I know? Why would I look at the statistics why would you bother to, why would that you... come from the matrix itself? So the matrix, I... so every fact you don't like, because it doesn't suit your agenda, you just dismiss as matrix bullshit. No, I'll give you a very simple way I view the world. COVID can't hurt me, so mm. why would I take their injection? Mm. Point you don't two. have to. Point two. You don't have to They tried it. to make us, including you. Yeah. You told people yes. they you know should why? have the vaccine. You know why? If they don't have it, they shouldn't leave their house. You know why? Because at the time, the scientists... Well, and by the way, scientists is ever-evolving. At the time I said that, the scientists said if you had the vaccine, it would prevent you transmitting the virus. The Matrix. That, that. turned out to be wrong. Because the Matrix And they lies. issued updated advice saying updated. further studies updated. said updated. that actually you could transmit it. And at that point, you know what I did, which you never do? I held my hands up and went... I was wrong because the advice changed and now I would not say the same thing. That is called actually evolving opinions when facts change. Let me give That's you actually a... how a civilized democracy works. Oh, is it? We live in a civilized democracy, do we, sir? I actually would argue that point with you for, very, for a very long time. I don't mm -hmm. think we live in a civilized democracy. Another point I want to make here, if I had cancer or if I was at threat of a genuine disease which could actually harm me, would the NHS text me 10 times a day trying to get me treatment or would I be sitting there waiting for eight I think months the way to the, get an appointment? I think the way they wouldn't care about me and they'd let me die. The way so the, the fact that they will endlessly text me and try and beg me to get this poison should be an alarm bell, bell for anybody with a brain. Actually, I'll tell you what the NHS has sent me. I'm a 58-year-old man. In the last few months, they've sent me uh, one about a flu jab, which I'm going to have, um, because I think it stops you getting flu, and flu's nasty. Yeah. Uh, a COVID booster, which I won't have. I think I've had enough of those. Yeah. I'm fine with that, thanks. Uh, they sent me one about having uh, a check for a bowel cancer, which I've done and came back negative, and so on and so on. The NHS texting system is for our benefit. Of you course. don't have to do it. No one's holding a gun to your head. The Matrix isn't saying, if you don't have this, Andrew Tate, we're gonna we're gonna do something to you. Do you have any idea? You're how not in. You, you've not been treated in Romania by their system because of anything to do with COVID vaccines. Do and you, your your attempt to try and persuade people that that's the case is ridiculous. And you know it's ridiculous. Do you have any idea how difficult it was to remain unvaccinated, Pierce? Let me tell you from somebody who was unvaccinated and travelled the world. Do you have any idea how difficult that was well, actually yes, to do? Well, yes, because countries have border controls. Oh, because they tried to force everybody. Mm. So to sit and say they weren't trying to force. You know what they did? They said, 
come get the COVID vaccine. It's good for you. It's going to help. They tried to coerce you by being nice. They tried to lover boy everybody. Mm. They tried to use the lover boy method to force people to get the COVID vaccine. It just came to, we need to put all these people in jail. Andrew, they were being nice to people Andrew, trying to help them. Nobody, Unbelievable. Nobody forced you to have it. Did you have the vaccine? Absolutely and utterly not, mm. sir. My principles are not for sale. I would have stayed in my house to the end of human time mm. and sat there as a pure blood, the last one, oh, the last pure blood Andrew. on the planet before Andrew. I inject myself with poison. You're not making an MGM trailer. Yes, I am, because it's a matter of principle. Mm. I am not a farm animal. My blood is mine. It does not belong to the government, and I decide what is in it. Right. All right, so you have a polio vaccine, but not correct, a COVID one. Correct. So your brilliant brain has determined that you know more about the uh, medicinal and scientific benefits of individual vaccines and the polio one you decided with your brilliant brain will have that but even though a lot of people by the way have had side effects to polio vaccines did you know that yes correct is that the matrix doing that no i didn't say the matrix gave them the side effect oh. i've just told you all the reasons i didn't get the vaccine right. i've already described it at length but you work out with your brilliant mind which vaccines to have correct okay Correct. Okay. You realize you that can join my email list on corporatetake.com. You can sign up for free, and I'll tell you which vaccines. I, you I wouldn't have. come to you for vaccine advice. Why, Andrew? Because I you would. have zero experience. I didn't get. I didn't get the COVID one. Advice. I, did, I obviously did pretty good. I avoided the poison shot while everyone else got it. So I'm actually pretty proud of my track record. What happens if you're found guilty of the things you're charged with? Well, then I'm going to have to go to jail, I assume. What's the maximum sentence you could get? I don't know. Yes, I you do. I, I actually genuinely don't. You've never asked your lawyers? I've, it, it can be between three to eight years, I right. think. So you do know? I don't know the maximum. But if you sentence. were to serve eight years, having served three months and know how bad that was, yeah. could you cope with that in a Romanian jail? Interesting question. Could I cope with it? Yes. Would I be the same afterwards? I'm not sure. What do you think even the three months did to you as a man? Well... It was a fantastic test from God to make sure I am the man I say I am, because I think there's a lot of people who speak about masculine excellence who are not the men they say they are. When trouble appears, you often learn that they are nothing but postures. I had nightmares for a very long time. I couldn't sleep. I struggled with certain things. I would check my bed sheets every single night for cockroaches religiously. I had a problem with that, but I never turned to therapy. I never turned to drugs. I understood that all of these things are from God and they're given to me so that I can become a stronger version of myself. And I welcomed them all and I embraced them all. And now that I'm a better, not completely, but almost better, part of me actually misses my nightmares, Piers. Part of me misses training all night. I didn't sleep for weeks, you said You said you didn't have nightmares. No, I had nightmares. I said I didn't have nightmares in jail. When I left, I did. And I kind of miss it because I had so much time in the day to get things done. And now I'm sleeping a full six hours. I feel a little bit lazy. So. Perhaps I need another test from God. And if God decides, Allah is the best of planners, if he decides I need eight years in jail, then I will embrace those eight years in jail and do my absolute best to come out as the most formidable version of myself. Have you felt suicidal at all in the last year? I don't believe in suicide. It's haram. I know. You said that before. But did you feel like you may want to end it all? I would never kill myself under any circumstances. So the day they put that on the news, when they finally take me out, you can know it's a lie. It's haram. I would never kill myself. Lock me in that cell for the rest of my life. I would never kill myself. While you were under house arrest, you, you tweeted this. Avoid women who go to festivals. They're either on some loser's table who's feeding them cocaine or in a crowd of sweaty peasants because they're a sweaty peasant. Endless Instagram stories screaming and having fun to prove to the world they're worthless. Hard pass, festy hoes. Correct. I tweeted that, yes. Again, why would you categorise all women who go to festivals in such an unpleasant way? I actually categorised all men who went to festivals also. Did you read that tweet? Why are you gendering the argument? I think all people who go to festivals are stupid. It is peasantry. I've never been to a festival in my life. I'm not going to stand there and scream and jump up and down for some other human like he's God. I think the whole thing is embarrassing, all of it from head to toe. It's all sweaty peasantry and it's all just drug-fueled insanity. So why are you gendering the argument when I insult the women who go to festivals and also the men who go to festivals because all of it is peasantry head to toe and I do not regret it all festivals are peasantry anybody who goes I do not associate with I've never been to one in my life I never will so you've never been to one how do you know what they're like I can see enough I've seen the sweaty bodies bumping into you've each other been to high one. on ketamine pretending that the song they heard on the radio at home is now more fantastic because they're listening to it from a loudspeaker I get it but just it's to embarrassing be, but to be clear you've never been to one correct my infinite brain that understands vaccines no, no, perfectly we've also understands. You have, we have established your brain is unique. Correct. Uh, you, you tweeted the picture of Amanda Holden, a very good friend of mine. Uh, it's a very harmless picture. She's in a bikini on holiday under a rain shower. 
uh, looking extraordinarily uh, beautiful. In a sexual pose. And you tweeted, you are a wife and a mother and you're far past a teenager. There's no need for this post. Agreed. Again, it's just misogynist to say that. It's not misogynist. What kind of woman of her age, she's just turned 50, what kind of woman of that age actually show off her beautiful body in a, in a nice bikini like that? What's you, wrong with that? You can call me crazy. You can call me misogynistic, but I think once you reach the ripe age of 50, any woman should not be interested in thirst trapping on Instagram. I think she has bigger responsibilities. I'm sure she's a very intelligent lady and she's mm. done amazing things. She's famous. She's obviously very capable. And I think she could do things more interesting than standing around trying to thirst trap on Instagram like she's 18. Because the last I think she's above it. I wasn't insulting her. I was reminding her that mm. she's actually such a fantastic person. She's done such amazing things in her life and she's so achieved that she's actually above thirst trapping. I was reminding of her of her worth mm. because as a feminist, we're all feminists here, right? We all believe in women empowerment. I'm reminding of her, her of her worth. Are you and, a feminist? Uh, sure. Well, you're not though, are you? I believe in feminine empowerment and I think feminine empowerment is in, yes I do, and feminine empowerment only is in modesty. Only, modesty is empowering only, for, fem, for females. You only believe in Taking your clothes off for men on Instagram is not empowering. You it's actually, empowering when you say, no man but my husband can see my body. That is female empowerment. Mm. And I was reminding her of that. I was reminding her of her ripe age and her intellect. And there is no need for that. How post. old are you now? I am 36. 36 years old. Correct. At what point will your antics, you know, chugging your cigars in your ripped body, in your compound, with your security and your Bugattis, at what age does that become a thirst trap? I don't know if that ever stops being a thirst trap. Because so it's fine for you. Once again, one rule for the man, another rule for the woman. Well, it's interesting because I've never heard this argument before, but I'm extremely intelligent. I've already deciphered how this is going to go from head to toe. It's called, I guess we can look at peacocks, right? The male peacock, he shows, look who I am. Look, look what I can do. Look at my mm. achievement. Look at my beautiful feathers. And I guess you could call it peacocking to a degree. I'm showing the world. So you I'm showing, extremely, you I'm showing extremely your... physical capable. I'm extremely physically capable. Yes, that's correct. I'm extremely financially successful. But yes, you stripping off for Instagram is fine. It's not stripping off but for Instagram. I'm boxing. When you, you, do, box, you box, no, 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 you box, you box. You do it all the time with your cigar and you're showing off your rip. But that's fine for you. But if Amanda Holden dares do it, that is apparently thirst trapping. I think me boxing with no shirt on is different than a 50 year old woman posting. You don't just box. I've seen you doing ones where you wander around all moody with your cigar and you're topless and stuff. So fine for you. Are you a fan, Piers? Uh, no, I just think it's thirst trap. Do you? Yeah. Well, I don't do that. Perhaps it's successful. You, maybe you should start. Perhaps mm -hmm. it's successful because I do have a lot of female fans out there in the world and they pretend I'm a misogynist, but it turns out that 85% of women on the planet seem to agree with me. Every single woman I've ever met in real life agrees with me. I have no female hate at all. I've never had a neg negative interaction with women ever. Yes, you have. With who? Well, what about the BBC journalists that came to your compound? <laughs> Lucy. Yes. Uh, I've never I had a negative she, interaction with a female I ever. don't think she was a fan. I think she was. I would categorize that as a negative interaction. Well, she seemed to follow me around for a long time. I think she was a little bit There are obsessed. lots of women, Andrew. There are lots of women I know personally. There are lots of women who find you incredibly offensive. I don't think so. Right? It's their right to. It's your, of right, course, to, of course. It's your right to not care. Yep. But the idea that somehow you're this beloved person for the world's females, I think is uh, not true. You are for a certain type of woman who likes to be treated in the way that you like to treat women. Well, let's counter that argument, right? Because the world, as I said at the beginning, is nuanced. Am I beloved by all females? No. But when I'm sat here with someone as prestiged as you who says you're a misogynist and you hate women and women hate I you. I think you talk in a way that is misogynistic, yeah. Okay, well then you make it sound like all women hate me and that's also not the case. Of course, it's a nuanced argument. I didn't argument. say all women hate you. Some, some women agree with me, mm. some women don't agree mm. with me. When I said that post about Amanda Holden, a lot of women said, Andrew, that's actually completely correct. She's extremely famous and there's no need for her to be posting video pictures like this at her ripe age. I was actually empowering her. I believe that female empowerment is in modesty. But you don't actually believe in feminism. I believe in the idea you of... You believe in masculinity controlling women. No. They have to take instructions from you. They have to do what you tell them. And that is actually what love and relationships are about. No, I believe that men and women have different roles. I believe that we were created differently by God because we are the perfect team. Mm. I believe that a man who's in his masculine frame is best suited by a woman who's in her feminine frame. I believe when we work together, we can achieve amazing things, whether it's raising children or preserving society. And I believe a man has certain jobs and a woman has certain jobs. You don't understand this about the things I say. When I said there that women make bad decisions in the tweet you referenced earlier, mm. the point I was making is that women are more emotional than men. That is their superpower. That is fantastic. That is a great thing. I love female emotionality. In the tweet before you tried to use against me, I was talking about how I love a woman to be happy all the time, smiling all the time while I'm stressed. I love female emotionality. The reason women are better 
married with children. The reason women are married with children is because they're emotional. That is their superpower. That's not what your tweet said. In a position... You're not even remembering what you wrote. Of course it is. I said female women are more emotional than men is exactly what I said. I'm saying that is a fantastic thing, Mm. but there is no light without dark. So in certain situations, the emotionality is positive. In certain situations, the emotionality is negative. We can also argue the same for men, because what happens with me is everyone tries to gender my arguments. We can actually argue the same with men. Stoicism, male stoicism is positive in certain scenarios. It can be negative in others. We can come across as unempathetic or not care because we're stoic. But in certain situations, it benefits I know people who've told me that their kids are in their late teens, they're at schools where the name Andrew Tate is banned. Nobody's allowed to mention your name because the teachers think that your brand of masculinity is so toxic, they are seeing a immediate effect on the way that young men behave and not in a good way. Is that what the teachers think, is it? Yeah. Well, I am actually genuinely concerned by the fact that I've been banned from schools when I do nothing but preach masculine strength and excellence. But then if you actually understand how the society is going and how the world works and all the insanity they're trying to push on all of us, I can understand why they banned me because I speak the truth. If I was wearing a wig, Piers, Mm. and lipstick and telling young boys to remove their genitals, would I have been banned from schools? No. They would have said, no, you can say his name, no problem. No matter how big I got, if I had a wig on and lipstick and I had been castrated medically, I would be allowed to talk to the young boys. But as soon as I say, you're supposed to grow up and get big and strong, and if your wife doesn't want a job, you need to pay for her, it's your job as a man, you better find some money, then I'm the public enemy number one. Garbage. On that last point, you don't say if a woman doesn't want to work, a man should take care of it. You say a woman shouldn't work. I say my woman won't work. Right. I'm talking about my personal experience. I said, a girlfriend of mine, because I'm an extremely fortunate financial position. I was before Romania took everything, of course. I have hundreds of millions of dollars. So because I am in my position, I would not my, want my woman to work. I think there's more important things she can do. If you have hundreds money. of millions of dollars, where you said you had a worth of 17 million. Where's no, I the, said they took 17 million. Years. So where's the rest? Uh, they must have taken it. I think they have it. Or maybe I lost it. I think I lost it somewhere. You, you, you've never had hundreds of millions of dollars. Of course not. You haven't, have you? Of course not. You said they took all your assets. Exactly. Well, did they or didn't they? Of course, they took everything. I mean, they'll be watching this. Are they to assume that there are hundreds of millions more dollars they haven't got yet? Well, they're watching this, that's right. They took absolutely everything. You have it all. Right. But again, is that all just the smoke and mirrors? Is that all just the, the top G stuff that you play up to, which is that has no bearing on reality? I was the most Googled man on the planet. I was the most relevant man mm. amongst... 18 to 35 year old males, which are the highest earning and spending people on the planet. Mm. Do you really think that I am not, I can't pay my bills, Pierce? Right now, yeah. Okay. Someone's paying them for you. Correct, you're right. Someone's paying them for me, you're right. My girl's got a job, she works at Starbucks. Mm. Exclusive, Andrew Tate's girl, Top G's mm. girl works in Starbucks to pay the rent. I've been exposed. See, again, I don't know what to believe when you say stuff like that. Well, I'm telling you, my friend, that the Romanian state I think you deployed of, deliberate smoke and mirrors because you think it plays up to the brand. Romanian state have taken all of my money and I'm just, you know, getting by. Mm-hmm. That's what's happened. Do you worry about your impact on young men? I think that... Because, I, like I said, I would be completely honest. I think a lot of what you say, they should be hearing. Yep. And I, I have tangible proof every day when I walk around yep. that they are listening to everything you say. Yep. But there is other stuff you say where I don't want my sons, especially in that impressionable late teenage, Correct. to be listening to that. Correct. And that's a very. And I don't want my daughter to grow up and think that actually her only success in life will come if she's at home as some kind of servant to her man. Well, that won't be her only success, but that's an actual, that's a very professional question, and I'll give a very professional answer. I have a massive responsibility. With great power comes great responsibility, and I understand that young men do listen to everything I say. I do think I say good things, but you also made a very pertinent point there. You talked about the impressionable age of a teenager, and it's very easy for a teenager with their hormones and their lack of life experience to take the things I say and weaponize them and use them in the incorrect context. However, that is not my fault. You could argue that 16 to 17 year olds can look at anything on the internet and misunderstand it. You could argue that all of this transgender garbage and all of these rappers talking about killing each other and all these drill artists talking about stabbing their enemies mm. could be misunderstood by a 16 year old. I agree. So oh, no, that's said, not my that, fault. However- On that, I totally okay, agree. So I have a massive responsibility. And you are held to a different account, actually, to a lot of those rappers. Absolutely. Right, there's no question. I mean, the far swing is when John Legend rewrote the lyrics to Baby, It's Cold Outside because apparently encouraged sexual assault, but wouldn't say a negative word about any of the disgustingly misogynist 
and, and actually very violent lyrics of his rap friends. Absolutely. That, to me, is total hypocrisy. And it is hip hypocritical. However, unlike all of these other people, I have taken into account my massive power and my massive responsibility, and I try to make sure that I use my words as carefully as possible so that they cannot be misconstrued or misunderstood. Can I make sure that no teenager on the planet who listens to me ever misunderstands me, ever? No, I can't do that, but I am doing my very best. What do I actually talk about? What do I actually say? I, what I do is I come along, and let me give you the broad overview of my message. You're a man, so your life sucks. It's always going to suck, and it's going to be pain. You're going to do nothing but suffer. You're going to suffer as a nobody, or you're going to suffer the pain it takes to become Actually, right. most men don't have that. But that you're going to suffer as a nobody, because trust me, nobody suffer. Or you're going to suffer the pain it takes to become great. Life is not supposed to be a happy picnic. You're supposed to get up, work hard, dedicate yourself, get strong, get rich, go through whatever it takes to become somebody of significance. That's my overall message, you don't have to and get, I believe you have to, it's a positive. You've got to get rich to be happy. No, most of that, In fact, most of the super rich people I know in life are incredibly unhappy. Really? So you're selling a kind of full string. Well, I don't... A lot of rich people are miserable. Have you ever seen a rich person give their money away? And a lot of people away? who have very little money can be very happy. Have you ever seen a rich person give their money away? Yes, of course. Okay, do you give all your money away? Will that make you happier, Piers? I don't Do you want the Romanian state to take it all? I didn't smile that day. And let me tell you that the reason I tell about men to become financially successful is for two reasons. One, because you have a job as a man to protect and provide, and you can do neither of those things if you are broke. That's the first reason. And the second reason I actually preach to young men to become as financially successful as possible is a greater, broader reason. And I believe we've entered a very interesting stage in humanity where the matrix has finally cracked. Three or four years ago, there were certain narratives you could not talk against. But with Elon Musk owning X, and now we have Rumble, we have a lot more information on the internet, people are starting to tell the truth about many different subjects. There's a whole bunch of them we can name. And I like the idea of people who are free thinking with a free mind, who are say, not matrix controlled, yeah, hang on. making as much money as possible because it takes money to win wars, and I want these people to be financially successful. Right. When That's why I tell all of my fans who believe in me to become as rich as possible because they understand that everything that the government does is lie to them. Right. And we need finance. You use the word truth there. I don't think it's necessarily that people want to promote truth, they want to promote their opinions. Often people's opinions on facts can be very different. People can take the same set of facts to different opinions. It doesn't mean it's the truth, right? Well, that's true. But I mean, I, I don't believe in this my truth crap, right? Neither, neither do I. But, but we... there are facts which have to be accepted. And you can have an opinion about them. You and I can disagree about all sorts of opinions, but actually not facts. Okay, but I can argue this point where the matrix comes out with a fact and all the opinions countering that fact are censored and they are destroyed, then that fact becomes de facto truth because it's the only version of reality which exists you think, to be ingested by the mind. So you still need varying you, opinions on all public. Do all you all think that what you, uh, let's, let's put it this way. Sure. You would have relationships with women and encourage them to take part in webcam sexual stuff. No. Well, actually, yes. Why are we going back to this? Because there's one question I want to ask you sure. about it, right? And both sides made a lot of money, sure. right? Okay. And in most cases, because they haven't complained in most cases, you would assume it was a mutually beneficial transactional relationship, right? I can assume that because thousands of women have been through this and most of them haven't come forward and complained about the way they were treated. It was transactional. But was it moral? Do you think what you've been making money from Park the illegality aspect to one side. Do you feel it was moral? Ten years ago, I helped women promote their profiles on the internet. Correct. Ten years ago. Mm. Firstly, I have not been involved with it for seven years. It's not how I make money. I haven't touched it for a very long time. Seven years is a but long time. You made a lot time. of money from it. I made some money from it right. a long time how ago. How much? Some money. I can't even remember. Millions? Mm. Millions. Perhaps. Millions. You made millions of pounds. A long time ago. Well, hang on. It's important. You made millions of pounds from sexual webcam activity where you and the woman doing the webcams would make money. You accept that? No. What I did is... Well, this is, what, this is how you made money. No. A long time ago, and I talked about this at length on many different podcasts, yeah, yeah. and I don't hide it. I said a long time ago, 10 years ago, I helped women with the tax side and the technical side and the promotion well, of their profiles. Well, they work for you. The promotion of their profiles on certain websites. And I said about this, and I said I haven't been involved with it for seven years. The only reason this is even coming up again is because I'm monumentally famous, because nobody cares. We're in Booker, well, no, it's let not. Me, Pierce, it's we're not. in Bucharest, it, Romania. Do you understand that there is a video chat studio with mm. girls talking to men online right there, mm. outside that window? I'm sure. In fact, there's about 10 or 15,000 women in this city who do that job the fact that you, now. And the fact that I had Andrew, some, I dipped my toe in it 10 years ago isn't even significant. I'm only asking if you think it's moral. Do I think it's moral? Because you speak in such a morally self-righteous way now 
Do you think that that was moral? Well, I wasn't religious back then, but let me sit and analyze. Because now you, you converted no, to I'm, Islam. Yeah, correct. You're a Muslim. Correct. They have, you know, a code of, of behavior. Do you think that that fell short of I have code? to answer as a professional. And as a professional, I would say, do, judging by my current code, no, I do not think that women being naked on the internet is moral. However, there is... Like, so you made money immorally. You can admit that. It's nuanced like all things, Piers. At the time, I was atheistic. I know that some of my girls talked men away from suicide. A lot of men are ridiculously lonely. Mm -hmm. I would also say a lot of the lessons I know about men and how they think and how lonely and sad they can be and how difficult life is as a man actually came from that era because I saw a lot of very successful men with a wife and with kids and with money mm -hmm. pouring their heart out to some 20-year-old they never sure. met about how sad they were. I learned a lot about the world, and I know that a lot of suicide was prevented, and I made a lot of women millionaires. But would I do it now? No. However, I'm in a very different situation now. I'm a different person. I'm religious. I'm also extremely financially successful. Please understand, Piers, I come from Marsh Farm Luton. I came from one of the worst areas inside of the UK. Mm. I could have stabbed someone. Every one of my friends were breaking into cars, breaking into houses. Most of my friends were in jail. What did I do? I promoted accounts on the internet. You didn't made sell, money. Didn't you sell crack. Didn't sell yeah. drugs, didn't rob anyone, didn't shoot anyone. And now, because I am successful, I'm going to be held to this moral standard by people who grew up in fancy homes with white picket fences and went to private schools. Well, no, actually, I am from Marsh no, Farm no, Luton, no. and the biggest crime I committed was completely legally promoting internet profiles. Right. There are people around me who did far actually, you're only going to be held, for far less. No, no, you're only going to be held to the standard of the religion you converted to, which you've already said. When you take said, the Shahada, well, all your former Finns Which you've are already erased. said would look at that as immoral. When you take the Shahada, all of your former sins are erased. And I actually encourage you to find the light and convert to Islam. Andrew Tate, thank you very much. Thank you, sir.